Great morning, everyone. I'm so glad that uh, you've had the opportunity just to be in the presence of the Lord and, and just seek his counsel and his face this morning before we entered into service. It's such a wonderful opportunity to receive and grasp all the things that God has for you when you've already entered his presence before you even enter into the service this morning. So we're so glad you're here and I have such great news this morning. Um, I want to first uh, express in uh uh, Psalm 118, 24, and we know this all so well, right? This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. One of the things is so hard to find things to find joy in, especially in this season and this time. But if you look at even the smallest things that God has done for you, it ought to bring great joy. Just think, he says again, rejoice rejoice because God has already given you this day. So let's take joy in that. Now, this morning, I want to let you know that I have a special guest this morning uh, that is going to present the word for us today. So it, it, it'll give you a, a new way of seeing things, a new impartation. And so we're just so glad to have her. And I'm just going to allow her just to just to minister to us this morning. But I, I just want to take a moment and just say, look, and this morning, at this hour, if you will just lift your hands, if you will just say, God, I thank you this morning, whatever it is that you find joy this morning that God has allowed you to do, take this moment, take this opportunity to give God some praise, give him some glory for the joy that he has put right down on in the inside of you. I know there are a lot of things going on, so many things that we can say and talk about that are negative, but I want to I want to look on the positive. I want to look at the things that God is doing right now. You are on Sunday morning. If you got up and you're watching this video right now, this broadcast, man, you are alive. You're seeing things. You're breathing. You're, 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 you're looking forward with hope in the things that are to come. So this morning, take joy. And I ask that this morning, open your hearts and let God speak to you. Let God move. This morning, we thank God for all that he's doing, and we thank God for you. I want to remind you this morning that God loves you, and so do I. Be blessed. Enjoy the message. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones who hear me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. I'm the woman's son. Good morning, church. Blessings to St. Stephen, United Methodist Church right here in Yazoo City, as well as to our sister church, Clark Chapel in Cary, Mississippi. We love you guys so much and can't wait to be together again in fellowship. <laughs> Until then, we are just so very grateful that even in the midst of what's going on in the world, that God saw fit to preserve you and me for another day, another hour, and another moment to partake of his word. Blessed be the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen? Okay, guys, today's scripture is coming out of the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. And it reads... 
Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, hmm, some say John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, hmm, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. If I were to slap a title on today's message, I would call it, Who Do You Say I Am? In this familiar passage of scripture, Jesus asks his disciples a two-part question. The first part of the question is especially telling. Who do people say I am? At this point in his ministry, Jesus is downright famous. People all around Caesarea had at the very least heard about him. And being consistent with their human natures, they all had something to say. Shocker. <laughs> Some identified him with being a great spiritual leader and said, he's John the Baptist. Others identified him with the prophets and said, He's Elijah or he's Jeremiah. In other places of scripture, people who identified him as a teacher shouted rabbi. And sadly, people who identified him as a rebel or imposter mockingly referred to him as the king of the Jews as the sign affixed to the cross so explicitly stated as it read Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. People had a lot to say about Jesus. Some things were good and put Jesus in the ranks of other great leaders, but some things were not so good and even compared him to the likes of Beelzebub. That's not good. Now, how could people say such different things about the same man? I mean, surely Jesus' character hadn't changed from day to day, the same Jesus who healed the woman with the issue of blood was the same Jesus who spoke in the synagogues before the teachers of the law who mm, seemed to kind of despise him. Was there a problem with Jesus or was there a problem with people? I think you know the answer to that. Let's be honest. People talk. And some of what they say about you is going to be wrong. You ever played that game telephone? If you haven't, allow me to explain. <laughs> okay, guys. Picture this. A group of friends or classmates stand or sit in a single file line, one behind the other. The person in front of you whispers a statement to you that you then have to deliver to the person behind you. The object of the game is to quietly pass the message along to every person in the line until the message gets to the last person who receives the message. When the last person in line receives the message, the hope is they will say the message as accurately as it was delivered from the first person in the line. Now, I played this game a ton of times in my life, 
And let me be the first to tell you, the message that is sent to that person, that first person, is almost always distorted by the time it gets to the last person in line. And it's always some crazy distortion, like what's your favorite color coming out as who went to Colorado? <laughs> or my teacher is fun turned to my TT eats gum. I mean, it's always some kind of crazy distortion that makes no sense. Now the second person in line has an advantage here. They almost always deliver the message accurately to the next person in the line. And there's a simple reason for that. They are closest to the line leader. And when you're in close proximity with the person delivering the message, the likelihood for error goes down while the person sitting all the way near the back of the line, far away from the line leader, is almost always likely to not only hear the wrong message, but to pass that wrong message on to others. It makes me think, if my life was one big game of telephone and my spot in line was determined by how sensitive I am to the voice of God, where would I be sitting in relation to the leader? Would I be the one who is sitting right behind the leading of the Holy Spirit? Or would I be sitting all the way in the back, destined to deliver the wrong message to a hurting and dying world? Hmm. It's definitely something to think about. As we trail back into the scripture, we are faced with the second part of Jesus' question to the disciples. Obviously, the most meaningful part of this two-part question. And here it is. Who do you say I am? Surely this question must have sent chills up Peter's spine. It's easy to tell other folks' business. But when the tables turn and God puts you in the hot seat, things change. I can only imagine the scene. With tears welling up in his eyes, looking into the face of someone who has been touched by the almighty God. I can just imagine him looking Jesus square in the eyes and declaring from the recesses of his soul that this Jesus that had posed a question so directly was indeed the Messiah, the son of the living God. And I love Jesus' response here. He says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven Peter didn't need anyone to tell him how he should identify Jesus because the Spirit of God gave him that revelation. Man didn't even have a say. Can I ask you a question? Who do you say he is? For me, in this season of uncertainty with regard to public health, he's been my mind regulator. When I was sick this summer, I knew him to be my healer. When I'm in need, guys, he's my provision. And as I sent my oldest daughter off to college, he became my promise keeper. In short, he is my everything. <laughs> but that wasn't revealed to me because somebody told me that. You see, the more I walk with him, the more the Spirit brings me revelation on just how big my God is. And I've learned that he can do anything but fail. <laughs> if you're having trouble identifying exactly who he is, let me ask you this. Are you sitting close enough to him to discern his voice? To get to know him on a personal level? If not, or if you kind of move back a little bit, 
I invite you to move on a little closer to the front of the line where his message to you will come across with greater clarity. When all was said and done, Jesus turns to Peter, who rightly named him as the Messiah, and decides that it's high time that Peter know what God had to say about him. He says, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Wow. Guys, that's huge. Isn't it funny how Peter didn't come into the knowledge of who he was until he could rightly identify who Christ was? That makes sense though, right? The Bible says our real lives are hidden in Christ. So if we don't know the one our lives are hidden in, how can we ever come to know ourselves and our God-given purpose? It's simple. You want the answers to your lingering questions about your life and your place in this world, in this time, or in this crazy season? Jesus is standing there, open arms, and ready to receive your answer to the question. Who do you say I am? Get to know who he is. And while you're at it, get to know some things about yourself as well. <laughs> this is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, I just want to thank you, Lord God. I just want to love on your name because you have been so good to us, Lord God. Even, God, when we stray to the back of the line, Lord God, and that message starts to become kind of faint and unclear, Lord God. You are so good to us. You are so wonderful to us, Lord God. You help us find our way back up closer to the front of the line so we can hear your voice. And I thank you, Lord God. I'm grateful for you, Lord God. You truly can do anything but fail. God, I just bless you, Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone who is under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that you would help them, Lord God, to rightly identify who you are, Lord God, that they might be found in you and that they would find their true lives, Lord God, their God-given purposes in you as well, Lord God. I thank you. I love you. I praise you. I give you glory. I give you honor, Lord God. I continue to, to pray your hand of protection, Lord God, over your people, Lord God. I pray for your healing power to touch everyone, Lord God, affected not only by this coronavirus, Lord God, but by other viruses, Lord God, and illnesses that, that seek to, to steal, kill, and destroy us, Lord God. You are able, Lord God. And for those who are walking back into those classrooms, Lord God, for that face-to-face -face classroom instruction, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for your hedge of protection over the students and the teachers, Lord God. And even those, Lord God, who are getting a more virtual experience, I pray your hand of protection over them as well, Lord God. And for every mother who has decided, you know what, I'm just going to homeschool my kids, I pray that you would fill her up with the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory. We honor you and we trust you. This and all things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would like to give to St. Stephen United Methodist Church, you can mail your donations to P.O. Box 618, Yazoo City, Mississippi, 39194. Again, that's P.O. Box 618, Yazoo City, Mississippi, 39194. See you next Sunday.